let's try and understand what this line means. What this line says is, there is an object called web edit, means web edit. On the website, there is a field which is of a type web edit and it ha I have give, QTP has given it a name called Q. It belongs in another object called page and the name for that page is iGoogle. That page belongs in another object called browser and that is I, it's given at another name called iGoogle. On this object, now perform an operation called set. Set, what it does is whatever you give here, it will take that value and put it into this object. And this whole here is to give where is that object located. Now let's look at our object repository. Today's session is going to be a very brief 25-30 uh, minute session um, to give you an overview of how the tool works um, and how people apply it in their work. Now, when we record it, it has recorded something called as a test objects. What are test objects primarily are? When we are preparing the test, either through record or other means, it will create objects and it will say these are test objects. When you run it, it will apply the operations or methods. For example, in this script, set is a method. Similarly, click is another method. It will do execute methods on those objects. <coughs> you remember I said the first thing it was a browser. So your browser is here. Under the browser, there are multiple objects. Now, where is my first line? Page I Google. Okay. Now, if I expand this, I will find two things here. There is Google search and there is Q. I can do operations on these two. Now, out here I see web edit. Q is of a type web edit. Google search. See, the name Google search is of the type button. And we have performed an operation called set on this and click on this. To be able to execute this, QTP has to first store all the object and its properties and it does it when we record. Okay, so that is a summary of what it, uh, QTP does. Now, there are various expansions that you could do to this. You could, instead of setting Obama as a static text, I can say it is a variable and I'll name that variable, let's say search underscore term. Now I can go to the code and say I define a variable search underscore term and into search underscore term I can assign some text. Let's say I put India. Now what it would do is it would repeat the same operation and instead of whatever we had static text here or a constant, it will take whatever value is in this variable assigned here. This is a step to define a variable. This is a step to assign a value into a variable. And then we can repeat the same operation for it. Let's do another quick round. Now, let's say you want QTP to wait after every step for, let's say, two seconds so that you can be clearly see what is happening. Wait two seconds. This is another command that you can use to enable Quick Test Professional asking it to wait two seconds before it goes to the next step. Now let me click on run. I'll still this temporary run results folder and click on OK. Once I do that my browser opens but for some reason it is not showing up so I restore it. It is finished India. See it has taken India from search term. Now it's put India here and second step was click on Google search. We've got that now it should click on advanced search. It has done that, it will wait two seconds and close the browser. This is the very, very basic initial level of testing that we could do with QTP. As we go along, there are many, many features and each of those features will be learned, but we would go step by step. Once one fundamental uh, concept is learned, we will apply that, uh, a new learning to it, 
and then slowly gradually have an incremental learning. Now we have seen how we could do a quick test on a simple web-based application. How about if I want to test a uh, Windows application? I'm going to say uh, new test. I'm not saving this test. 